Good morning, everybody. So um, my name is Eric Leclerc. So I'm very pleased to be here. I would like first to thank a lot uh, Intelligent for this opportunity. And uh, so I will try to um, show things around the new challenge about uh, integration, what we call um, heterogeneous integration, because it's something which is coming uh, uh, more and more uh, attractive for a lot of reasons. Uh, for many applications also, we will discuss about uh, 5G, telecom, but also automotive, uh, automotive product, and also for defense and some other things. We will see that the trend is everywhere. Uh, okay, let's try the tool. Perfect. So the outline of my presentation is why heterogeneous integration first, then uh, about UMS, few words, technology portfolio of UMS, uh, not only 3.5, but also we are more and more uh, using silicon uh, processes. Design tooling, which are Cadence, Golden Gate for, uh, for silicon, and ADS, uh, ADS for 3.5 compounds. And more and more also ETH, which is a new tool from uh, Keysight on working with ADS. I will give um, many examples I hope not too, too much, but many examples in the 24 gigs radar sensors where we use both uh, CIGI and GAS. Uh, 24 gig, gig, gigs radar where we use already existing products to make new products. Um, I will use also some examples uh, related to the um, uh, GAN process. So the we are going to introduce a 0.15 micrometer GAN process which is uh, used in this 2 watt integrated front end, where we combine a gallium arsenide with a gallium nitride. I will show some uh, other examples in defense, and uh, the last one, which was uh, also R&D topic, worked with uh, Keysight to use a new tool, ETH, to take into account the thermal simulation capability inside the uh, LDS. And also, for all this example, what is really needed is the capability to test uh, products, not only for characterization, but also for production. And I will show you the tools uh, used in UMS for this medium or high volume production. So why the, um, what is the heterogeneous integration? I think what, what is interesting is that many years ago, um, monolithic integration was a kind of a graal somewhere, a grail, uh, a must, um, uh, something like an end in itself, but with uh, this question, what is uh, really the unique capable process? So I mean, how to find a, a process which is able to provide performances, to have good yield for very large MMIC, because integration at the monolithic integration means a very big MMIC, so which, which is an issue. Handling of this MMIC, uh, also things related to uh, stock management and whatever. Uh, with no crosstalk, you remember the speech before, which was really interesting about the integration or not of the, of the PA in the uh, full MMIC. This is an example. So, and today, considering this new features like the optimization of the overall chain. We consider that the selection of best technologies for each function, whatever, for example, LNA, PA, uh, mixers. Um, finally, uh, the best way sometimes is not to combine everything on the same process, but to use the different processes av available in order to get the best. We also decrease the risk because when you have to, to design, uh, for example, uh, 10 to 12 different uh, MMICs, somewhere it is less risky to develop 10 to 12 MMICs than only one MMIC which does everything in terms of management of the risk. The level of uh, isolation at the MMIC also is very important and it's sometimes really um, more uh, accurate, more uh, uh, better from an isolation point of view, to be able to separate the function inside the package or inside the module. The way to manage also the integration, the control of the ball bonding, for example, was improved more and more during the last years. 
And now we know that it's possible to do reproducible and fully controlled uh, integration. Flexibility also. Uh, why flexibility? Because when you, con you can combine MMICs inside a package, you can do a kind of reuse of some circuits. So you can reuse uh, LNA, you can reuse uh, e even so uh, single to parallel interface. And this is not the case when you have only one MMIC doing everything. Testing, screening, stock management, uh, supply chain, all these things are uh, sometimes easier job when we have to, to integrate different uh, technologies inside the package. And also, uh, last point to be mentioned, is that the quality of the 3D simulations has improved strongly over all the last, uh, last years. And that makes possible today to, to simulate properly bonding, even in uh, millimeter wave frequencies, inside the package, which makes the system uh, more uh, reliable and, uh, from a simulation point of view, more uh, accurate. So the grail in the past, which was <laughs> somewhere here, like a full integration on one MMIC, now is moving and has moved from the what we call the QMMIC to modules somewhere in between. And UMS, we are working in that uh, in that area today for a lot of uh, of cases. So it, it is the purpose of, of the talk. So a few words about UMS. Huh? UMS is, uh, as you probably know, a soft source of uh, RF MMIC solutions. Uh, COTS, standard product, or ASIC, develop on, on demand. And we also have a foundry service. So we have a long heritage of supplying the most demanding applications, including uh, uh, our two mother companies, which, uh, which are Airbus and, and Thales. But we also serve any other uh, space, uh, defense customers around the world. Uh, with a high level of reliability. We have two industrial facilities and about 1,400 people. So the wafer fab is based in, in Germany, here, where we are developing also the technologies, 3.5 technologies. And in Villebon, uh, near Paris, we have uh, product development, back-end production, support, and, and all, all the other activities. So typically, because of the two mother companies, uh, the core business of UMS, the strategic business, is about defense and space. But uh, actually, the commercial uh, part is, is, main, is the main part. It's about 73%. And defense and space is about uh, 20, 27%. So technology portfolio. Now, what are the technology portfolio used by UMS? For sure, we have, we have our internal uh, 3.5 foundries. But for all the cases I will um, discuss together with you today, we, we have also uh, access to um, Silicon the World uh, foundries like NXP, Tower Jazz, IHP, uh, Global Foundry, and ST. So, According to the kind of product we are working on, according to the customers, we can select uh, one of these uh, Silicon World uh, foundry to, to manufacture uh, our, our product. So we have access to various processes, SIGI BCMOS from, from 150 gigs to 320 gigs FT, or CMOS, RF CMOS, uh, with different gate lanes. And for sure, we have our internal 3.5 process, so where we have uh, mainly gas pehemmed for low noise, gas pehemmed for uh, power. We have also um, um, HBT for VCO design, which is strongly used in the automotive market, a MESFET process, and a shot key diode process up to very high frequencies. So this is for gas and for GAN. We have released uh, many years ago the, the quarter, mm, quarter micrometer gate lengths PHEMT, uh, GH25 in foundry mode, and we will uh, release soon, end of Q1 uh, next year, the GH15 for uh, higher frequencies applications. So design tools with external and uh, internal PDKs, because of course as a foundry we have to provide our customers PDKs, but when we use external foundries, we need also to use their uh, PDK with 
sometimes different tools and it's a different uh, world, I would say. So for all the silicon world, we use uh, Cadence environment, which includes some tool for simulation um, with a design flow for mixed signal, so digital and, and RF. Simulation of analog transistor level with a spectrum model and or behavioral uh, um, description of the model, which is typical for digital world. Uh, this global system simulation uh, capability allows also accurate noise, power, spectrums and, and setting time simulation. We also use a uh, golden gate from Keysight uh, tool for the, these kind of uh, simulations and Momentum EM tools uh, in which are integrated in the cadence and environment. Virtuoso uh, AMS designer, designer is under evaluation up to now, uh, as well as uh, the SPICE um, tool to, to make a time domain simulation. So sch cadence uh, schematic VHDL to layout, so we use some of these tools, some are under evaluation like uh, Virtuoso, Be before being fully fully implemented. Layout interconnect parasitic extraction for uh, EM simulations and we use also typically uh, tools like Asura or PVS for checking uh, the layouts according to the design rules for the foundries uh, and according to the other rules. Layout versus schematic is very important for sure in the probably more and more important in the digital domain it's uh, mandatory where for RF design it's quite uh, uh, different. It's more easy, it's easier probably to detect any error on the RF uh, design compared to a digital one where you need very in-depth uh, tool. And for all the, our classical activity on 3.5 technology, we use uh, mainly ADS from Keysight where we have the auto layout capability uh, with the parametric cells implementation and tools like uh, DRC and, and EM. And I will also say a few words about the uh, new ETH uh, tool for s uh, thermal simulations. I mentioned uh, at the beginning, so we will probably not take too much time on that, on that kind of things, but that when we do uh, integration of many especially at high frequencies, many uh, functions inside the package, it's really mandatory to, to have a good uh, RF description of the interconnections uh, inside the, the package. So the bond wires for sure, the laminates and so on, it's something which is critical. If, if you do not have a, a right description at the beginning of the interconnects, then the product will not work properly at the first uh, uh, iteration. So ADS can easily uh, simulate cavity, bond wires and uh, dielectric bricks. Um, for sure I, I mentioned bond wire but also uh, chip to board, board to package transition, all the transi transitions which are in addition to the MMIC world that have to be taken into account. So this is really uh, something which makes possible today the what I call these heterogeneous integration at a uh, millimeter wave uh, frequency. First example now, a few examples about this uh, kind of integration of things inside the package. So this is um, a product for automotive which is uh, several millions per, per, per year or per month but really for the automotive market combining uh, two technologies, so silicon germanium technology with uh, 180 nanometer gate lanes and with uh, a gas also part which is still used for for the VCO and here we take the benefit of the gas performance which provides very good uh, noise figure and uh, one over F noise and for sure we combine with the possibility to integrate strongly all the functions like the BCMOS um, on these BCMOS uh, MMICs. <coughs> so this, this product is for uh, automotive radar on 24 to 24.5 with um, 13 dBm uh, maximum uh, uh, transmit power with uh, 12 dB um, control of the, of the gain, uh, gain control, 37 uh, dB 
range uh, uh, gain, sorry, for reception with 24 uh, dB control, uh, 11 dB um, noise with uh, uh, IF uh, higher than 100 kilohertz with a max at the maximum RF gain, and all this uh, is really important for the, this kind of uh, um, radar product. So temperature variation also has to be uh, uh, well controlled because, um, and for that you need also good models to take into account the, the temperature effect, whatever the, on gas and also on the, on the BCMOS process. So DC biasing 3.3 volt uh, with a low power on 200 milliamps uh, at uh, P out. It, it's fully for this MMIC. Uh, fully ESD protected and uh, uh, in a QFN, pure QFN molded plastic package. So now uh, we also integrate in the, in the logic, the an asynchronous logic with a low current to, to design the decoders, uh, multiplexers, uh, frequency divider, um, and then also the, we integrate the digital to analog converters for bit. Um, on the uh, serial to parallel interfaces. We have uh, reg registers and uh, um, uh, this uh, serial to parallel interface integrated. So this is a block dia diagram for this example. So this is one product uh, today, which is uh, one of our best sellers in the automotive market. And the next example is to show that with combining the same MMICs, so I mean we use the same um, silicon uh, chip inside, the, again inside the package, probably a larger package compared to the previous one, but we have the same also uh, gas HBT VCO, and we just need a kind of splitter, which is a pure gas passive device in between in order to, so this is uh, pure passive, no transistor on this MMIC, and we can create another architecture uh, in a very flexible way and somewhere for a medium to low quantity it's better to do that than doing a full silicon MMIC which is uh, as you know a high cost uh, to enter even if the production cost is lower behind and sometimes uh, for medium volume it's better to to play with that in order to take benefit from existing uh, MMICs. So this one is, um, uh, it so we move from two to four RX. It's a multi-technology again, uh, combining the, the gas HBT with BCMOS for optimization of cost and performances and also time to market because we were starting from an existing, existing product. And so we can see here that we have more than 50 dB uh, isolation from TX to RX which is also a, a key and probably not possible to get uh, 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 so good isolation when we, when we use a, a single uh, chip. Okay, um, another example now is a 5G, about 5G. This is an example with, which was presented at the European Microwave Week in, in Madrid. It's a, uh, 2 watt highly integrated front end, 24 to 31 gigs, uh, which combines inside the, the package uh, a GAN die um, with a gas one. So the GAN die includes the power amplifier and the uh, switch, and the gas die is dedicated to the uh, reception for sure. So applications are uh, high throughput fixed uh, access wireless, sure, TDD, a communication system, then phase array antennas, whatever the applications are, it could be used for phase array antennas. High linearity HPA, so bandwidth, I already mentioned the bandwidth, the gain uh, um, is more than 30 dB in a, a transmission pass, uh, with more than 33 dBm output power. Uh, with an uh, RX gain of uh, uh, 18 minimum uh, dB, with uh, RX noise figure below 3.5 dB, and uh, uh, um, 1 dB uh, um, sensitivity minus 7 dBm. 
low power, power DC consumption is uh, below 7 watts and it's in a QFN fully molded plastic package, 4x5, 20, lead, 20 leads. And this is an, another example of what we can develop using all the tools. So in, in that case, it's only a ref tool. There is no, no digital part, but uh, again, we can simulate everything in the same uh, uh, window, I would say. And uh, this is uh, new, new because uh, through the quality of the tools behind, we can develop such kind of product with a good reliability, a good level of reproducibility. So, and it's coming to be a, a product uh, very soon. So typically, this product, uh, which is you know, it's a demo board of, of this product, which provide again, as I mentioned, uh, close to 30, 36, 38 dB. Uh, with an uh, output power of 32 dBm and uh, this is a power added efficiency so uh, in the range of the same window for all, uh, <coughs> the same scale sorry for all so the, with PAE in, in the range of 20, 24 uh, dB. So this is uh, a description of noise figure. You can see the noise figure of all the full bands so from 3 to 4 about and uh, the gain uh, higher than 20 20 dB. Okay. Um, another example, which is uh, for defense now, where we, uh, we have also <laughs> such. Uh, uh, why? Because, as I mentioned, it's possible to do so for uh, intermediate or low volume also. It's not, not only for high volume that we can uh, combine and develop such uh, solutions. So, here it's um, the use of uh, serial to parallel interface with a core chip inside the package and um, what is interesting uh, here is the possibility to use our standard product so for example this l-band phase shifter is alone is in our product catalog in as a as stand standard product but we can create through this uh, using this product um, the um, by addition of the serial to parallel interface we can create a new product this is another example with the S-band phase shifter and the last one is a S-band core chip. So serial to parallel interface can be chained to control the core chip uh, up to 16 bits, for example. But it's uh, just to show that uh, the um, combination of different MMICs or different die inside the package can contribute to generate new product on request according to the, to the needs, and even for, uh, for, for low volume. I think, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it was validated over also a frequency band, uh, which is uh, sometimes challenging with a silicon process to be, to be stable over a wide uh, range of temperature, but it is something which has to be taken into account uh, since uh, the beginning. Another example, I think it's the last one, it's a lot of examples, sorry for that, but it's uh, uh, S-band uh, HPA, uh, 50 watt HPA, inside the package. And uh, through this example, I would like to, to show, I will not go into the details of everything um, here, because it's kind of synthesis of what we did. We worked on, with Keysight on the new tool they have introduced, which is ETH in order to calculate the junction temperature during the simulation, taking care uh, of the active part, which is here the 25, uh, uh, this is um, power dissipated, 25 volt, 20, 25 watt power dissipated um, inside the power bar. And uh, inside the package, we have the matching network at the input and at the output, which is also dissipating. So we need to take into account all the contributions for the power dissipation, not only the active part, but also the uh, gas splitter and combiner to calculate the junction temperature. And the capability of the tool is that you can simulate everything, including the package, which is today not possible using our uh, electrothermal model, which assume, assumes uh, the junction temperature at the backside of the MMIC. So through this tool, now it's possible to simulate fully 
their environment. And this is a product we developed in uh, QFN 8x8, and a large one, uh, we, with uh, 50 watt output power and 50% uh, power added efficiency. So now test and uh, evaluation, uh, evaluation for all these products, we need to have solutions to, to characterize, uh, sort, and measure the circuit. So UMS develops an uh, evaluation board for customers, because customers need to, to make trials, for supporting customers during their integration in their system, and also for our own uh, characterization uh, um, purpose when we need to create a data sheet with uh, all the inputs, we need to do so. <coughs> so, UMS prov provides a uh, full characterization service where we can measure RF from DC to 100 gigs, about, uh, also with uh, digital control capabilities. We have, uh, I don't think this is here on, on, that, uh, on that picture, but we have a Faraday room for noise measurement, automated tests and software definition, and we can measure over a wide uh, range of temperature. Test feature development, we, we, we need sometimes also to develop specific test feature, not only for manual, but also for semi-automatic or automatic measurement. Because it's millimeter wave, it's quite uh, challenging, but we have the, the tooling and, and uh, expertise for that. So we can design a PCB uh, uh, layouts. We, we use typically eight layers for BCB maximum. Um, we develop um, uh, also production test set bench with customers according when it's an ASIC, according to their uh, specificity requirements. Um, up to 44 gigs. So, and we optimize the seconds for the sorting and, and, and uh, before, the, before delivery. So for medium volume, typically what I call medium volume would be below 250k units per year. We can use this kind of uh, equipment. Um, as this is a, a typical uh, telecom example. It's a transceiver uh, um, circuit where we have to measure the conversion gain uh, from baseband IQ to RF, the leakage uh, on the yellow, uh, the DC consumption for sure. We have also to take care of the uh, detectors and uh, input-output um, to measure the, if there, there is any single to parallel interface uh, to be taken into account during the measurement. And for sure, for noise, it's not a systematic measurement. We, we do noise measurement by, by sampling. So this is for medium. Now for higher volume, like for automotive uh, volume, we, 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 we have uh, other kind of equipment. It's typically for more than one million per, per, uh, per year or more. And we develop this uh, kind of uh, um, test setup uh, in the same way as, as, as before, but with taking into account the, the high level, uh, high throughput during the measurement, because the measurement has also to be very, very fast, sometimes less than one second by, by, uh, by MMIC. So this is an example for the CHC2442, uh, which is uh, our best seller in, uh, in, uh, in automotive, where we had to develop all these uh, things, uh, you can recognize here the, this MMIC, to, to characterize and to be able to deliver only the good uh, parts because in the automotive uh, domain you need to have uh, as possible zero defect. Okay, and I think this is the last slide now uh, about also reliability for qualification. We, we need to develop a uh, test bench for that. We, we have more than 15 years background in, in pro product qualification. We deliver a lot of quantities under this uh, AEC uh, Q100 uh, standard and we, we have uh, for automotive as for space also some rules to follow and to develop all the test bench and equipment we need to, to fulfill the qualification. So I think, yeah, this is the last slide. <laughs> thank you, Hélène, for yeah, your. <laughs> So if you're doing 100% testing on the final package products, what level of testing do you do on the chips before they're assembled? 
on the chips, on the depending on if it's uh, 3.5 or silicon uh, MMICs, we are used on the gas uh, product to do systematical 100% uh, too. In, in, in the thermal modeling you do for this 50 watt uh, PA, pre presumably the, the PCB, the PCB that is attached uh, to that model is quite important. So, and that depends on the customer, presumably. So, how do you deal with that? It's a very good point because um, the quality, especially for power products, the quality of the assembly between the the module and the the, the motherboard or the, the, the has to be well managed. So the, the level of accuracy of the simulation depends at which level of the integration you stop. So, but somewhere you have to make the assumption that the temperature is homogeneous. And which is interesting through this tool is that you discover that uh, even at the MMIC level, the temperature is not homogeneous. So when you compare the accuracy of the modeling, uh, in the past we believe that the temperature at the backside of the MMIC will be or we assume will be homogeneous, which is not the case, and this is new. Because if it's not homogeneous, in that case, how do you define the junction temperature based on what, on what reference? So this is important for product qualification, but also for modeling and for reliability assessment, definitely. Okay, just one more question. What's your view on about the integration of chip? Yeah, it's right that uh, I didn't show the roadmap of UMS, but for sure there is a very um, active uh, roadmap behind, which means that we are more and more working at uh, uh, what we call system in package, and for that we have different trends. So one trend is to, to use flip chip. We develop a technology which is called, for example, hot vias, which is a, a way to to drive the RF signals through the, the, the backside of the MMIC. It's one option. There are also uh, big, uh, there are big trends uh, in the, uh, not only defense, but uh, to separate uh, electrical ground to heat remo removal. And for that, we need also to develop a specific package. Um, and and to finish on top of that, we are also considering the possibility, but it's, um, I would say, longer term, to accumulate technologies. Uh, but this is very challenging because according to the level of power, to the RF ground quality, uh, each case has to be... But it's a trend. For sure, it's a, it's a long-term trend. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Elena.